China bans Australian cotton. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Sets. Grab your stein of coffee because it looks like, well, China is now putting pressure on the Australian cotton industry. If we have a look at this article from ABC News. So Australian cotton, the latest casualty in the trade tensions with China. We've seen other industries that are being impacted, coal in one particularly important one, just waiting for iron ore to be impacted as well. And there were all the other resources, even, even regardless of actually actual government interventions in China, we saw just the reduction in the lobster industry over in Western Australia. It was so dependent on the Chinese market that when demand crashed, due to their restrictions and the fact that Chinese New Year holidays weren't really happening, it really was felt over here. So let's have a look at the cotton industry a little bit before we go through this. We can see here right now, cotton is 69.92 US dollars a pound. We go out to you know, the all of the data that they have here. You can see it had a huge spike. Wow, a huge spike in 2011, uh, 200, which I imagine is just a rare circumstance but you know look around here we're kind of right in the middle of the last few years it shot up in the 70s but look at it in the 20s <laughs> what it was doing wow you can see that inflation there can't you now cotton it's this is from the observatory of economic complexity so world trading cotton is 57 billion dollars it's 51 in the world the top exporter of cotton is China at 13.7 billion. The top importer is 8.65 billion. And it, it, its project, well, its product complexity is at negative 1.69. So it's 91st out of 96. If we can scroll here, we can see, you know, China is the top destination. India is the, the top, uh, or the second. Well, no, sorry, no, the top exporters were China and then the US. US and then India, Pakistan and Vietnam. Top importers were China, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Turkey and Indonesia. So Australia doesn't really rank there with regards to exporters. We're only one point or one point zero six billion dollars. Now if we jump over here to the agriculture census, we can see where cotton is primarily grown. And you can see most of it seems to be grown in New South Wales and Queensland. And this is the uh, production in kilograms. You can see here New South Wales is almost double that of Queensland. So it's going to impact these parts of Australia here if there is a reduction in demand for cotton exports, particularly from China. Because if we jump here to the Australian economy, we can see, now I brought up this one here, this is raw cotton. So, uh, you know, it's gone down a little bit since we looked at that agricultural census data. But in 2018, the raw cotton trade uh, value was 1.04 billion or 0.42% of Australia's export market. And the majority of that is actually 33% is going to Vietnam, then followed by China, then Bangladesh. So Vietnam, China, Bangladesh, you can see that. And nothing going to Europe, nothing going to Oceania, or maybe uh, nothing at all, nothing going to the States. So it's completely going over to these countries here. Now, if we go to the live shipping data, we can see, well, I'd be assuming that most of the cotton exports will be on bulk carriers heading out of the East Coast along here up to China. And, oh, I'm not going to, no thanks, I don't need to go on that webinar. So that, that kind of gives us a bit of a, an overview of it. We can see here, I've changed this to, okay, I've changed it to something else, other data, but you can see where it's, where it's imported, where it's grown, the current value of it, and the potential impact that that's going to have on the Australian economy or what states it'll impact. So let's have a look with that in mind at this uh, latest article. Is this more political posturing coming out of China or is it just a sign that their recovery hasn't returned? The demand for their cotton products isn't quite where it once was or are they just trying to put pressure on Australia? Because, I mean, a lot of the gin factories over here, they're owned by the Chinese too. So, 
Australia's cotton industry is bracing for what could be a devastating blow as it becomes the latest casualty in the escalating trade tensions with China. Mills in China are being told to stop buying Australian cotton as speculation grows that a hefty tariff is about to be slapped on the trade. Government sources have told the ABC the cotton industry could face tariffs as high as 40%, a sanction that could make the trade with China unviable. Under China's current trade rules, the Chinese government determines how much cotton each mill can import through a quota system. But the ABC understands spinning mills have been warned not to use Australian product or risk their quotas being slashed. Without the government endorsement, these mills could be forced to pay 40% more to buy Australian cotton. So it would be taken very seriously. Trade Minister Simon Birmingham has confirmed he's aware of concerns China might be said to impose changes on the trade and is seeking more information from Australia's largest trade partner. Now, they are our largest, largest trade partner, but as, I, as I've shown here, unless this has changed in the two years since this data was gathered, they're not our largest cotton destination. Hopefully, the, the farmers will be able to pivot to new sectors. But then again, you can't really take a huge hit to 25% of the sector and not feel it. And not feel it. So, impeding the abilities of producers to compete on a level playing field could constitute a potential breach of China's international undertakings, which would be a very will be taken very seriously by Australia. Are we are we really so naive to think that China gives a damn about their international undertakings and their, their WTO commitments? Come on, it's 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 ludicrous to think that. It's ludicrous. Come on, really. Federal Agricultural Minister David Littleproud said the government had not received any official word of changes to the cotton trade with China and conceded his government was having difficulties getting answers from Beijing. Obviously, we would prefer that our dialogue continues to enrich, but you can only resolve differences by actually having your hand out and being prepared to have that conversation, he said. We are showing leadership as an Australian government and are prepared to have that conversation. The Australian industry has become increasingly nervous about the $800 million market, which typically accounts for 65% of the cotton grown nationwide. Okay, so if we look here, since this data, it was only 263 million. Wow. So has it grown that much? It has it grown that much? That's insane in the last few couple of years. Well, okay then. We're in a much worse position than I anticipated. So it's grown. Since 2008, it was 263 million. Now, they're saying 800 million, guys, in 2020. Uh, sorry, 2018 to 2020. In two years. Two years. How have we gotten into this situation? How have we got... And what have we thrown all this money into? What's it all gone into? Bloody houses. Property. Property. Oh, we're... <laughs> oh boy oh boy in a statement released today cotton australia and the cotton shippers association said the industry was trying to understand apparent changes to export conditions it has been, become clear to our industry and the national development reform commission in china has recently been discouraging their country's spinning mills from using australian cotton the statement said our industry is working with the australian government including the Trade and Agricultural Minister's Office to investigate the situation and further understand what is going on. So nothing is in writing. Well, we've seen nothing was in writing with regards to coal. And yet BHP have now confirmed that they are seeing orders being deferred. It doesn't have to be in writing, does it? Cotton Australia Chief Executive Adam Kay has told the ABC he fears the industry could be affected by broader trade tensions affecting other Australian commodities. We're concerned that we're getting caught up in that, Mr. K said. We've certainly been working very hard to make sure all the procedures and protocols and paperwork have been perfect because we know there's some tension there, but this has come out of the blue. At the moment, there is nothing in writing. It's all word of mouth. So that's what we need to get to the bottom of. Little Proud talks up other options. Well, okay, you can talk up other options, but look at this cha this delta change now. They've grown grown from <laughs> from two hundred and sixty three million to eight hundred million in just two years. 
what other options are there when the, the, there's economic decline all over the world? Minister Littleproud said the government was working quickly with the industry to understand the scale and veracity of the situation. But he also spruced Australia's trade credentials, including new free trade agreements with emerging markets. Already, they can send into Indonesia, where a free trade agreement was ratified a couple of months ago. India and also Vietnam take significant amounts of our cotton. Indonesia, I mean, they're not even they're three point four percent. So unless they've grown significantly too in the last few years from thirty five point nine million, I can't imagine they're at the level that China has been. The industry at the moment believes there's around a $30 per bale cut to the current price, which takes it down to $500 a bale, which is still profitable to producers around the country. I'm pleased to say we will continue to explore other markets, but we would prefer to have a trading relationship that is fair, open and transparent with our Chinese counterparts. I think that's a little naive from our leaders to be expecting that. Just, this is just another tool for political influence. Cotton Australia and the Cotton Shippers Association said the industri ind industry relationship with China was long valued and respected. To now learn of these changes for Australian cotton exports to China is disappointing, particularly after we've enjoyed such a mutual beneficial relationship with the country over many years, they said. Despite these changes to our industry's export conditions, we know Australian cotton will find a home in the international market. Earlier this year, China introduced hefty tariffs on Australian barley and suspended beef imports from several, several Australian abattoirs. It has also launched an investigation into allegations of dumping by the Australian wine industry. So there we have it, everyone. There we have it. Is China going to ban Australian cotton? Will that be next on the list? What do you think? And the, the impact on the New South Wales and Queensland economies. What's that going to happen? What's going to happen to those regional areas? And eight hundred million dollars, such a growth in such a short amount of time. Do you think we can find replacements that quick in a global recession? As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or KuCoin. You can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.